I'm going to talk again about speaking to the mountains, speaking to the obstacles in our lives, speaking to things. I believe that it's very, very powerful to be able to speak and know that when you speak, that all of heaven stands at attention. Every demonic realm stands at attention. And if you can speak it out in faith, it will slice and it'll smash and it'll set you free in Jesus' name. Amen. And I'm just going to read today from Joshua chapter 11. And this is what it says. And it says, At that time Joshua came and cut off the Anakin from the mountains of Hebron, from Debur, from Anab, from the mountains of Judah, and from all the mountains of Israel, Joshua utterly destroyed them with their cities. None of the Anakin were left in the land of the children of Israel. God, when God delivered it, he set them free. There was none of these giants, none of these things that were there to torment them. But there, there remained some in Gaza, in Gath, and in Ashdod. They were, they were overtaken and delivered later on, but... This, the land that the children of Israel possessed, it was free from all these people. And Joshua took the whole land according to all that the Lord has said to Moses. And Joshua gave it as an inheritance to Israel according to their division and their tribes. And the land rested from war. Friend, I want to tell you today, I believe that so many of us, there's a war that rages within us. Wars that, that rage as the enemy bombards us, as we have the word of God that tells us one thing, and then the enemy tries to uh, nullify the word of God, tries to take it away from us. And, and where we're sometimes there's a war where, where we're believing, but our eye gate sees something different. We see the, the atrocity, we see the, the devastation, we see the mess, we see... Friend, you don't have to go too far today to, to see the mess that the world is in. How many people know that the world is in a mess? Like you don't have to be too smart to understand that. And, and you know, there's so many things today and, uh, that are against people. The, the television and different things like that are training our young people how they're supposed to live, live in, in, in uh, that permissiveness, live, live in that sort of loose society. How, how they're supposed to dress, how they're supposed to do all these things. And there's, then there's the, there's the other thing, there's the Word of God that, that wants a different style and wants something fresh and, and beautiful and, and wholesome. The enemy coming to destroy our children and destroy our families and destroy whatever he can. And, 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 and so there's a war that's raging. And I believe, that, friend, every one of us have got to stand up against that thing that comes against us in Jesus' name. And, and what you might be battling in one area, I might be battling in another area, but we've all got our wars. And, and this was a particular war. And the reason, as I said last week, as Joshua came and, and as Joshua had to cut off the uh, Anakin, he had to break that stronghold, was 40 years before when the 12 spies came to the land and they came to this place of Hebron. And as they came there, they, they saw giants. They saw the fortified cities. They saw the inhabitants of the land. And Joshua, though he wanted to go in and possess the land, he, because of the majority, said, we are unable, we are but grasshoppers in our own sight. And because of that, they turned away from the promise of God. I want to say that again. What they turned away from was the promise of God. They turned away from the provision of God. They turned away from the plan of God. They turned away from what God wanted them to have. And I want to say this to you as people. When we come against these things that come against us, God wants us to break through because he's got a promise for us on the other side. But if we turn away, we also turn away from what God wants us to enter into. Can you understand where I'm coming from here? So it's very, very important for us to come to these mountains and these Goliaths and giants and goodness knows whatever else it is and come against them in the name of the Lord and break through. You see, Joshua, though the, what the Bible says is that the people, when they heard the report from the spies, it says that they went weeping. They, they, something hit them and, they, and that, that, 
negativity, that, that insecurity, that, that, that God said we could do this, but it's not happening for us. God said we could go in and possess the land, but it is not happening for us. And so there's, there was a war going in there with what God said that they could have and what their eye gate said that they could have. And because of what their eye gate said and 10 of the 12 spies said, we are unable to go in, that the people, the children of Israel turned around and departed from the promise of God and wandered around in a wilderness for 40 years. Can you imagine the stories that were going on in that 40 year period? I, I, I'm a bit of a fisherman, and the, and the fish always get bigger in the bag. <laughs> the fish always get bigger in the esky until you get home and you pull it out of the esky and you think, oh, that's not the fish I caught. My fish was bigger. You even convinced yourself it was bigger, amen? <laughs> But can you imagine the stories? Can you imagine the way that the giants would have even got bigger? The, the walled cities would have got higher. The, the armies would have even got fiercer and all that. And, and fear would have entered into the hearts of people. Joshua and Caleb, they were different. They had a different spirit. They wanted to go in and possess the land. They wanted to go in and take the territory. They wanted to say, God has promised us this. And, and they even saw the grapes and they saw the produce. They saw how beautiful it was. It was a land flowing with milk and honey, but they turned around and they walked away from it. And I wonder how many times you and I turn around and walk away from what God wants us to enter into. God is either God or he's not. He can either deliver us or he can't. He, I, I, how many people believe that God can deliver us? <laughs> God is well able. We, we, we have things, no weapon formed against me will prosper, says the Lord. Amen. He, he, he's baptized us with the Holy Spirit and with power. It says here, and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Friend, not, we don't just receive anything. God wants to fan the flame in your life. God wants to do something dynamic and so powerful in your life. So Joshua came to this place and he had to, he had to, he had to. Can I say it again? He had to confront these enemies. He couldn't just bypass it. He couldn't just, because the people had to see that God was able to deliver them. They had to see something. So the first thing Joshua does is he returns here. And he comes and he starts to confront these things. And he starts to break hold of them. Friend, as we start to enter into a whole new era, as we start to enter into 2016, there's some things that we need to leave behind in 2015. I want to leave behind unbelief. I want to leave behind negativity and failure and defeat. I want to go into 2016 with a new dream and with a new vision. A vision of greatness, a vision of purpose, a vision of plan. Friend, I am not on this planet just to take up a bit of time and live for a little while. I am here to make a change on the Sunshine Coast. You are not here just to fill up a pew. You are here to make a change in the atmosphere that will go out beyond you and me and go out into the highways and the byways and start smashing up the side of the heads of devils and demons. Demons, amen. Oh, don't talk about devils. And I want to tell you, devils are very, very real. Demons are very, very real. And they have conned you and they've mucked around with you long enough. And it's time to confront them and knock down those giants and say, enough is enough. We are children of the Most High God. We are anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. We have the Holy Ghost within us. And we're coming through in Jesus' name. Coming through in Jesus' name, amen. We're going to break every strong or smash every, every fetter, every wall that needs to come down. So Joshua had to do that. And in doing that, when he did that, I believe that the people of God started to, all those rumors and all those murmurs and all those things that had, that had built up in them were smashed. There's a scripture that I quoted earlier this morning. You shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. If you believe a lie, the lie will take you right down the very, very pit. It'll destroy you. 
If you believe you can't do it, if you believe it will never happen for you, I want to tell you, friends, that lie will take you down. It will pull you down. It will destroy the potential that God has in you. It will destroy whatever it is in you. But I want to tell you, when you can rise up and you can say, devil, enough is enough, you will start to see the victory of God. Because I want to tell you, right behind you, God will back you up. God will support you. God will say, yes! And I want to tell you, there's a bunch of people that are up there in, the, in glory right now, looking out there, all those patriarchs, all those the ones that have died before us, the John G. Lakes, the Catherine Kuhlmans, and all those people, all those ones there that, are, that have carried the faith and carried the banner and spoke the word of God. As they see a bunch of people start to rise up, I guarantee they're out there saying, yes, Ooh, good on them. All of creations are groaning for a manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. God through Joshua had to smash the unbelief, the fear of an enemy that had stopped them for 40 years. Let me say that again. Joshua, God through Joshua had to smash the unbelief, the fear of an enemy that had stopped them for 40 years. You know, there's a lot of people on this planet today, men and women of God, that have had the anointing, had the power, had the victory, had all whatever it is, the, the qualifications, everything that they needed. And they went up to a gate and that gate was locked and they looked at the enemy and they said, I can't penetrate it. And they turned around and they walked away from the call of God. They walked away from the vision of God. They walked away from their purpose and they're wandering around the wilderness. But I'm praying that God will put a hook in their jaw and pull them back in Jesus' name. That God will get his, the last laugh. Amen. These, these things had stopped. How many people believe that they could have gone in that day? Hey, how many people believe they could have? Come on, give me a wave if you believe that. It's not a trick question. <laughs> They could have gone in that day, but listen, it stopped them for 40 years. But what I'm excited about is that at that time, all of a sudden, there was another generation that began to rise up. Friend, why can't we be that generation? I want to tell you, Joshua was not a pup. He was 80 odd years of age when, when the Spirit of God got hold of him and told him to go in there and he possessed the land. I want to tell you there's a bunch of people that God's going to raise up in this hour that you and I are living in that are going to be that generation of people that are going to walk up to those locked doors, that are going to walk up to those things that have been shut for years, that are going to speak to those things and smash the gates and knock them down in Jesus' name. Walk on through. Hallelujah. I believe that. I'm not just preaching something. I'm believing something. Amen. I'm expecting something. Amen. This is, might look like Christmas pudding, but I'm going to tell you, it's an expectancy inside me. Amen. I'm pregnant with something. Anybody else pregnant with something? Come on, give me a wave. If you're pregnant with a dream and with a vision, with a purpose, with a plan in Jesus, come on, get excited in Jesus' name. It's all right to get excited. I am excited. <laughs> oh, shakabundi. God, through Joshua, had to smash unbelief and fear of an enemy that had stopped him for 40 years. You know, David had to do the same when he killed the Goliath. The children of Israel were hiding in their caves and in their tents and in holes and, and everywhere like that. But a, a slip of a boy rises up and puts a stone in a sling. Uh, the, uh, the anointed one, amen. I want to tell you, no, in the natural, no sling with a little stone is a match to, be, to a giant that's got a spear and a sword and, and a guy running in front of him protecting him. And that's why I know that you and I can do it in Jesus' name. Because it's got nothing to do with our ability. It's got everything to do with His ability. All we have to do is trust and obey. But there's no other way. <laughs> trust and obey. Turn to somebody and say, trust and obey. 
trust and obey. There's no other way. We can be that generation. You see, when, when, David, when David slew the Goliath, the enemies fled. But the people of God came out of their caves and they came out of their dens and they came out of their hiding places. And it says that a new spirit got inside them and they ran after the enemy and they slew the enemy. Friend, that's what's got to happen to us, the church. We can't hide in the four walls of a building. We've got to get out there and we've got to tell people how good God is. We've got to tell people that Jesus is alive. We've got to carry the anointing. Jesus did the same when he rose from the dead and stripped Satan of all his authority. He led captivity captive. He, he, he raised up 12 guys that, that went out there and, 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 and actually shook the world. The world, friend, shook Shook every demon, everything that come against them. But Peter's shadow touched people and they were healed. People were delivered. People were set free. Demons came out of people. What an amazing event. What an amazing thing. As he stripped Satan of all his authority. Now a generation must rise up in the power of the Holy Spirit and show forth the victory of the cross. You want to be one of those people that will rise up? Lift up your hands right now if you want to be one of those people. Father, we've got our hands raised. We want to be one of those people. We want to rise above the ashes. We want to rise above the circumstances, the, the, the failure, the defeat, whatever it might have been that's affected us. We want to break every stronghold, every negative force, everything that, that has tried to stop us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because, Lord, greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world. And we serve notice on everything that's trying to stop us in Jesus' name. In Jesus. Sickness will not stop us. Things will not stop us. Nothing will stop us. We are children of the Most High God. Amen. Amen. Every one of us is on a journey and every one of us has challenges. I'm not trying to say, friends, that we're tiptoeing through the tulip with Tiny Tim. I don't know about you, but there's challenges that come. Anybody ever had a challenge? Come on, we all have challenges. Young man here, you shouldn't have challenges. But we have challenges, challenges. Things come and challenge us. These challenges come to us as along the way. But it's how we respond and handle these challenges that will determine whether we fulfill our destiny or not. It's how we handle these things. How, that's the thing that will determine how we whether we make it or not. We all have the opportunity to turn back or face the enemy and push through. I'm praying today that people will start to get a desire to push through. Amen? Anybody want to push through some stuff? Sin, sickness and death are under his feet. I want you to have a quick look with me at the book of Acts Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. Acts chapter 2. And the Lord said to my Lord, this is, and God said to my Lord Jesus, and God said to my Jesus, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies a footstool. Sit at my right hand. See, God wants to, is going to do something, and he's going to make the enemies of God his footstool. I want you to quickly turn now to Ephesians chapter 1. <laughs> Verse 19. Of course, 18, it says, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you might know what is the hope of his calling. And what are the riches of the, of, of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? 
And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And listen to this, and has put all things under his feet. I want to tell you, friends, every enemy you will ever face is already under, the, under Jesus' feet. It says that he has put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. And you he made alive who are dead in trespasses and sins. I don't know about you, friend, but I want to live, amen. I want to be alive in my God. I don't want to be dead. And what is the exceeding greatness to us who believe? according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Friend, I want to tell you, I want to see that video. I want to watch that on the big screen. I want to see what God did as God started to raise Jesus in the very pit of Hades itself, as Jesus began to stir and, and every demon in hell that had been saying to the devil, devil, he did say on the third day he would rise again. You've got to watch yourself. On the third day, the last second, the Holy Spirit flo flooded into that place and began began to stir and begin to raise Christ from the dead. And as he stirred, he stood strong and he walked over to Satan and he slapped him up the side of the head and he stripped him of every bit of power that he had. And he said, I will have the keys of hell and of death and everything you've been pouring out upon my people, it will cease from this moment on. And put every enemy of mankind under the feet of Jesus. And then God gave this Jesus to be the head of the church. He gave him to me. He gave him to you. Amen. And we are his body and the feet, are, the, everything is under our feet now. That which was under Jesus' feet is now under our feet. Friend, I want to tell you, you've got more authority in your little finger than the devil has in his own bo whole body. It's how you handle the conflicts of life. Whether you're allowed to make you bitter or better. These light afflictions are working for me. That's what I have to say now. These light afflictions, when they come, they're working for me. Amen? I'd rather them work for me than against me. Amen? They are not going to take me down Grumble Alley. They're not going to take me down that miserable road. They're not going to take me down to that road of failure and negativity and, and hardship and sorrow and goodness knows what else. Friend, we've got to stand strong. We've got to stand stall and we've got to believe our God. These light afflictions are working for us. The victory over Satan is complete. I want you to turn to somebody and say that. Out of your mouth. Come on, get it out of your mouth. The victory over Satan is complete. We're not waiting for him to complete it. It is complete. Amen. The victory over Satan is complete. The victory over Satan is complete. <laughs> I like that. The victory over Satan is complete. It is complete. I'm going to share some stuff with you right now that I believe that if we can get this into our spirit, Hades itself is taken captive. When Jesus rose from the dead, Hades itself is taken captive and has to be obedient to the word of God. Hades itself has to be obedient to the word of God. Every enemy of mankind was smashed, bound, chained by the Son of God. Is this doing you any good? It's doing me good. I can feel my biceps starting to... I'll split my shirt in a minute. <laughs> Hades itself is taken captive and has to be obedient to His Word. 
Every enemy of mankind was smashed, bound, chained by the Son of God. I like that sort of talk. What is the exceeding greatness of His power to usward who believe? What is the exceeding greatness of His power to usward who believe? What an amazing statement. See, when we received this mighty infilling of the Holy Spirit, I am joined to the victory of Christ. Because my Bible says you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. When I receive the mighty infilling of the Holy Spirit, I am joined not just to Christ, not to God only, but I'm also joined to the victory of Christ. In other words, when we receive the mighty Holy Spirit, we receive the spirit of victory. We receive the spirit of power and might and dominion. Do you believe you have dominion? Let me say that again because I got a bit of a shock then. Do you believe we have dominion? Do you really, really believe we have dominion? We also receive the spirit of grace, of love, and everything that Jesus won for us is uh, and is now conscious master of. Jesus is master of all of these things. He's master of power and victory and life and grace and love. And he gives abound- bountifully to all who ask of him. You have not because you ask not. All these things he gave to the believer through imparting to us the Holy Spirit. He's not just talking in tongues. So a lot of people today, a lot of Pentecostal church don't talk in tongues. What happens when we get filled with the Holy Spirit? We are quickened together with Christ. We are one spirit with the eternal king. I'm a joint heir. I am connected. Are you connected? I'll say that. Are you connected? Come on, you're going to have to yes or amen better. Are you connected? (laughs) Come on, we're connected by the mighty Holy Spirit power. Something from heaven got inside of this fella. Glory came down and heaven... Oh, heaven, heaven came down and glory filled my soul. There at the cross, my Savior made me whole. He didn't make a mistake. He made us whole. He, he imparted something into us so dynamic and so powerful, so, so, so. <laughs> I don't know what that means. So, so, that's a word, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. We are quickened together with Christ and we are one spirit with the eternal King. This power that the forces of evil can not conquer is now in me. That should give the devil a migraine. That should give him hernia. That should make him have a bad day. (laughs) That is an amazing thing. That, That is an amazing statement. This power that the forces of evil, you've got to know that, friend. When the enemy comes at you, say, hey, whoopee, whoopee. (laughs) You cannot stop me. I know something, the power that the forces of evil cannot conquer is in me. Devil, greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. He won't like that. 
If you keep saying something like that, guess what? He said, I'm not going to see that bloke anymore. (laughs) I'm not going there anymore. (laughs) He talks terrible to me. (laughs) He talks like I'm a defeated enemy. (laughs) He he doesn't seem to worry anymore. Come on, friends. (laughs) The power that the the forces of evil cannot conquer is in me. Come on. (laughs) Let's do it. Is, is it where? It's in me. Come on. It's in me. It's in me. It's in me. Me, little old me. Yes, you. It's in you. Jesus truly is a baptizer in the mighty, life transforming power of God Himself. Jesus truly is the baptizer in the mighty life transforming power. Did anybody else get transformed when you got filled with the Holy Ghost? Or were you just. Wouldn't have enough power of God in you to blow the fuzz off a peanut. Come on, you've got to start talking stuff. Some people say, oh, it's all me, my, me, my. Friend, yes, it's me. <laughs> we have to rise up, amen. Jesus is doing great. <laughs> He's okay, amen. God's doing fine. It's us down here that needs to have a revelation and understand that greater is he that's within me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I know that I am just a part of a mighty vine. I'm plugged in. But if you don't plug in, you don't get anything. Amazing. The power, the forces of evil, the baptizer in the mighty life transforming power of God himself. That's why Jesus said it's better for you if I go. Because if I go, when I go, I'm going to send you back the power of God that will transform your life forever. That will change you. Ah. It's changing us from glory to glory. He's changing us, he's changing us, he's changing us. Reinhard Bonnke said, I baptize you with water for the remission of sin, but he, Jesus, will immerse you in liquid fire. Let me say that again, Reinhard Bonnke. I baptize you with water for the remission of sin, but he, Jesus, will immerse you in liquid fire. Fan the fame. David was a shepherd boy, the youngest son of Jesse. David is a young boy with a heart for God. A heart for God. He loved to worship his God and be in his presence. Friend, can I say I believe one of the great keys and one of the great entrances is to come back into that place where all we want is Him. All I want is You, Lord. All I want is You, Lord. Just to be in Your presence, Lord. You see, this is what David was doing, just worshipping and loving his God. See, I believe what God is looking for is honesty. Real. Can I say real? He's looking for people that will worship Him in what? spirit and in truth. And he's going to gather a group of people just like that. That are just going to come into his presence and want him. And he's going to see that people and he's going to like the days of old where he spoke to Jesse and he said, Jesse, no, to Samuel, I want you to go to Jesse's house. And I want you to fill your horn with oil. And I want you to go down there and anoint 
one of his sons to be the king. I believe that God wants to anoint some people, amen, with fresh oil. How do you do that? Well, number one, you get under the spout where the glory comes out. <laughs> you just, it's all about you, Lord. It's not about me. It's not about me. It's all about you, Lord. And we start to just lift up our hearts and we begin to worship, to begin to love on Jesus. And the Holy Spirit will come down. The oil of the Lord will come down and start to mingle and touch us and start to do business in our mortal bodies and start to raise us up. God sees this boy and he sees his heart. So he sends Samuel to anoint him. The Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward, the Bible says. The Spirit of the Lord came on David as found in 1 Samuel 16, 12 and 13. The Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day, but the Spirit departed from Saul. David was a young man, and as he went through life, he had tragedies. He had trials. He had things that went wrong. He saw the effects of the Holy Spirit leaving Saul, but he also felt the effects of the Holy Spirit coming in him. That's why David, when he messed up, his cry to God was in Psalm 51.9. And friend, this is my prayer. As we basically leave 2015 and enter into 2016, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of my salvation and renew a right spirit within me. We just make this our prayer. Create in me a clean heart, Lord. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And renew a right spirit in with me. I believe that victories are waiting to be won. I believe that Jesus is coming soon. It's a time for you and I, the church, to rise up. Amen? Amen. We're going to come around something that is so beautiful and so very, very precious to me, the communion table. And I want people to just slip out of your seat and come. And we're just going to serve you today. Come on, man, we'll serve, eh? Come on. We'll serve. Come on, Ruth. You take... You, Come over this way. But folks, just come on out and let us serve you this year as we close the season. Renew in me. Renew in me, Lord. Cast me not away from your presence. Yeah, okay. Oh, come on, just come on out and be served. Bless you guys. Bless you, young man. Bless you, Dave. Huh? Bless you, honey. Bless you, little sweetie one. Beautiful children. The heritage of the Lord, a blessing.